Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be part eight of the pole position. I'm going to start putting this together today. The first thing I want to do is get the speaker grill riveted back into the cabinet. Then I'm going to get the coin door on, put the gas pedal in. We're going to work on the marquee, get that put back in. Um, uh, what else did I want to get done today? Oh, make the cardboard bezel that goes around the monitor. I picked up new um, board that is used for doing um, photos. It's like a photo mat, but it's solid black throughout. So we can make a new uh, bezel with that. Um, I do have the old bezel, so we will be able to um, copy it onto the new piece of cardboard. I also need to make one for my game because I don't have the correct one in my game because uh, it did not have one when I got it. Um, does this control panel bolt on with the hinge? Yes, we'll probably bolt on the control panel too. Um, it's gonna be a little bit of a longer video. It's gonna be probably at least an hour. I'm not going to show me bolting the whole entire coin door on because that takes a little bit of time. I'm just gonna show you how I'm gonna do it and what I'm gonna do, and then I'll do that off camera. Um, I do wanna clean up the inside of the cabinet. But first thing I wanna do is let's get this coin door riveted on here. After I rivet it on here, I have rivets that are similar to what they use, but not exactly, but they are silver in color so we're going to have to tape off the cabinet with some blue painters tape and we're going to use a little bit of the same color matte finish krylon that we used on the grill itself and we're going to put a coat of paint over the rivet areas um now they fit in here good they're a nice tight fit into the wood so we should be good to go that one seems really tight might have to drill it a little bit bigger thought they slid in here the other day when i checked them Unless, no, the old rivet's not in there, is it? I don't think so. Might have to drill this a little bit. I thought it went in yesterday when I checked it, but that's okay. No big deal. Let me go grab a drill and a drill bit. We'll get those drilled a hair bigger. And then we'll get these rivets in there, and then we will tape them off, get them spray painted. And then I will work on cleaning up the cabinet off camera. And then I'll come back, show you how I'm going to do the coin door. Um, and just we'll just kind of keep going back and forth here just so it's not a two hour long video But I do want to get quite accomplished on this today Okay, let's see what we need to use here for a drill bit Wrong box round two, okay Now this rivet gun I'll show it to you in a minute Makes me a little nervous because sometimes it wants to jump when you when the rivet breaks and it could potentially screw up the front of the cabinet. So I gotta try to be a little bit careful with it. I think that's pretty good there. I want these rivets to be as tight as possible. And that's really good, actually. Now keep in mind, these rivets are only holding the speaker grill itself. They're not holding the speaker to the cabinet. Um, I think Quantum cabinet used um, the rivets maybe to hold the speaker in as well. I'm not sure, I could be wrong, but I thought something like that was weird, but I might not be right. But uh, this, uh, the speaker itself screws in from behind. I need to adjust these leg levelers. But anyways, um, let's try this rivet gun out here. I've used this rivet gun many a times on cars. I gotta say this might be the first time I've ever had to re-rivet one of these on. So this is a big rivet gun here, because these are big rivets. So I gotta change this tip to the biggest one I have, which are in the handles over here. Actually, that one's big, too big. Well, it's gonna have to be that one. Looks like that's the only one that I have. That'll fit this. And it says on here, quarter inch.
You can buy these big rivet guns on Amazon. I don't, I've had it for probably 15 years. I cannot honestly say how expensive they are because I really don't know anymore. Just wipe some of this dust off of here. You can see there's a little bit of a imperfection right there. And what that is, is when I spray painted the grill, I didn't get in all those holes real good. So once I tape off the cabinet, we'll just put a coat on the whole grill just to make sure that it's covered. Okay, let's see what we can do here. I'm just gonna go slow. Stick those other two grill uh, rivets in first. Actually worked really well. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna pause the camera for a minute. I'm gonna get it taped off around there and then we'll spray a little spray paint on it. Okay, we're taped off. Spray a little paint on there. This is house painting tape. The reason why I'm using this is this is a less of a less aggressive stickiness to it because uh, the automotive tape is uh, a lot more aggressive the stickiness and this is a fresh paint job so i want to use something that's not as sticky if you don't have this kind of masking tape and you have regular masking tape let's say you just have the regular vanilla colored manila vanilla whatever it's called colored masking tape you could take your masking tape that's stickier than this stuff and go like this on your pant leg then pull it off and then stick it to your cabinet because what that's going to do is that's going to weaken the strength of the uh, adhesive on the back side and it'll go on and off a lot easier so if you don't want to waste money to do something stupid like this and you have regular masking tape just grab it run it on your pants real quick and that'll fix that up so we should be careful with this so we don't want to spray it too far hit the rivets first Let that dry for a couple minutes. I'll do one more coat. This stuff dries relatively quick. I forget how long. Let's see real quick here. Um, what was the dry time on this? Dry and application time. Dries a touch in 20 minutes. Handle in one hour. So probably won't even take 20 minutes for that light coat to dry. And then I'm just going to put one more coat on it. And then we'll peel the tape off. Um, and then at that point, I'm going to sand out that cabinet i'm just probably just going to do it by hand real quick and then vacuum it in there i'm not going to show that um it's just vacuuming out the inside of a cabinet and cleaning it and then we can get the coin door in like i said the pedal control panel marquee the rear grill or not the grill the vent that goes on the back of the cabinet the top of the cabinet we'll put that back on um and then we'll make the cardboard bezel and that'll end part eight. And then I need to, today, I need to look at that monitor more closely and see exactly what model number it is. It is a newer style monitor. I need to see if I can order a cap kit for it. Um, if I can't order a cap kit for it, I do have tons of caps in different sizes. So if I can't get a cap kit, maybe I can match up the caps with what I have. Um, long as your values are the same you know if it's like a 100 uf 
50 amp or 25 volt, you can use a 100 UF 100 volt. That's not going to hurt it as long as your UFs are the same. So we'll have to look into that. Hopefully somebody, uh, they make a cap kit for that monitor. Um, arcade parts and repair would be the more likely place that would have it versus anywhere else. So, all right, I'm gonna get this couple minutes to dry, put in our coat on, then, we'll, then I'll come back and we'll untape it. Okay, um, I sanded the bottom of the cabinet and the shelf where the monitor goes with just some 180 grit sandpaper by hand. And then I just vacuumed it out real good just to clean any overspray off and uh, any dirt that was still in there. So let's peel this off. And, uh, and then we can work on the um, point door. The reason why I have such a big uh, rivet gun is on newer vehicles when your windshield windshield when your window regulator breaks in your driver's door or passenger door they're riveted in the door nowadays so you have to drill the rivets out when you get a new regulator you got to buy the rivets of course they don't come with the regulator everything's separate everything costs money but you got to grab the rivets and then you have to re-rivet it back into the door so when i work on a newer vehicle if i have to replace you know a regulator for a door window or something like that i have that rivet gun so there we go that's back in and uh dusty on the front of the cabin i need a towel to wipe it off but nobody would have probably ever noticed that that was taken out and redone but i had to take that off normally i would just leave that on the cabinet but i had to because it was all dented in real bad so i had to hammer it out so now what i'm going to do is take the coin box well i could put the coin box in from the back so we need to grab my hardware that holds the coin door ring onto the cabinet, which are these tabs here and these, these uh, bolts. So these tabs go on here like this. You uh, start the bolt. You can actually put these on before you put them in. The camera's probably not even pointing to me. So you can actually put these on before you put the ring into the cabinet. So we can just grab all these bolts and these, and we can just put them on here. Because what we can do is force them that way so that we can get it onto the cabinet. So let me get all these started and then we'll put it on the cabinet. Okay, I have them all in the back here. There's usually never one on the bottom and the top. I've seen a few newer games that had them on the top and bottom, but for the most part, I've never really seen them with them on the top and bottom. These uh, bolts are 5 16 So now we can put this ring in here. Make sure that your uh, holes for your hinges are on the left side of the cabinet. And then basically, just need to tighten these up. Spin those tabs around so that the tab goes against the wood. And we just run in all eight screws. Which I'm probably going to use the drill. I just wanted to get it started with uh, my ratchet here. Okay, they're just started. I'm going to go ahead and tighten all eight of those down. And then we'll hang the uh, the coin box off of the back side. Okay, that's done. Now putting the coin box on the back is pretty easy. It just hangs on this ledge right here. This ledge right there. Then I have the top four clamps tight on here. I need to tighten the bottom four clamps. The four clamps on the bottom spin and they go on to the metal of the box and that keeps the box from getting lifted up. So I'll do that off camera and then I'll come back. Okay, let's uh, stick the coin doors onto the... Okay, 
cabinet here. Um, there's these little Phillips screws, machine screws, and this is what holds the hinge onto the housing. And we're gonna use this uh, little angle attachment here on my drill, on my impact, to put them in to make life a little bit easier than trying to use a regular straight drill or to have to do them by hand. So we're just gonna get that one started. I like to get them all started first because sometimes if you tighten them down ahead of time, it'll be in the wrong spot. tight on the bottom. I wonder if I loosen these, if I can lift the door up a hair. Sometimes you can. Feels like it went up a little bit. I'm holding it with my knee. A little better. I'm going to do the bottom one, then I'll come back, and we'll move on to the next thing. Okay, those are on. Let's move up to the uh, control panel. Let's get this bolted on. These take these uh, carriage bolts that I painted black, slide through the cabinet. Then they get a washer, and these ones had lock nuts on them. Don't know if that's original or not. I cannot verify that. Okay, I'm gonna get these tightened up and I'll be back again. Okay, those are tightened. Works good. I'm gonna probably just take a uh, carriage bolt for now and just stick it through uh, here. See if that'll keep it from opening or not. Not really. And maybe a little bit. Actually, all right, I'm going to set the dashboard on here because I don't know if the glass needs to go in first before the dashboard. I'm going to have to check. I have that old piece of glass. I did order a new piece from Phoenix Arcade, so that should be here in a few days. This goes up here, just like that. sure I can put the glass in because I, it goes like this and then the top folds in. So yes, I'm going to grab the glass just to verify it. So let's test this old piece of glass out. I'm pretty confident this 
goes in down here. Yep, and it goes right there, and then that bracket up there holds it in place. Okay, so we can technically bolt in that um, dashboard piece. I don't remember if I had the bolts for this or not. I'm trying to remember if they were in here. Because I remember there might have been one in there, but I don't think they were in there, to be honest with you. Maybe, maybe one. I'm not positive. Let me look around and see what I have for hardware. Okay, these are what we're on. It was an Allen head bolt with a nut that has the built-in um, like serrated washer, star washer built onto the nut. I'm going to put tighten these up off camera. You're not going to be able to see me doing it anyways. Okay, that's tightened down. Now, I had forgotten about these. These little green clips here hold the carriage bolts on to the control panel so that when you open the control panel, they don't go falling on the floor. And then I'm going to get wing nuts for these because I think that's what they had. They had one wing nut and the rest of them were regular nuts, but I'm going to put four wing nuts on there because then if you have to open it up, you don't need any special tools. You just need some wing nuts. This one don't want to go on. I got to kind of spin this one on. Okay. So now this one is that one clip somebody had changed. So now those are in place. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, now we have our gauge cluster on, coin doors on, except for all the mechanisms inside. We got the speaker grill on. Let's move on to the, uh, let's do the pedal assembly. We'll get that put back together and put that back in the cabinet. I am going to have to run in the house and grab a uh, piece of that textured tape that goes on the top of the pedal. I'm going to go grab that, and then I'm going to have to see if I can find these for the coin door because... Both of these are missing the front cover, and I'm missing one of the two springs. So I'm going to go see if I can find these, and I'm going to grab that tape, and I'll be back. Okay, um, I found a brand new pair of these coin eject buttons. So I had a brand new pair of these. And then here's the grip tape that we're going to put on the... Uh, gas pedal I'm just going to cut it with a pair of scissors it's made by 3M you can get this at Home Depot or Lowe's I've actually bought several rolls of this this was actually a new roll um, so basically this is 2 inch wide you can get 2 inch wide, 4 inch wide Peel off the back here. Maybe. Okay, and then we can put 
put it on here. Stuff sticks really well. Okay, there's our grip tape on the pedal. Amazing how well tape will stick when you don't want it to. Okay, now this gets bolted back onto this plate. I'm gonna drop this back on. And these get um, star washers. Then a nut. And one of these four, we need to put this on here for our brown. Actually, I'm going to put the star washer first, then the wire, then the nut, because the star washer is going to bite into the metal which will cause a ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this tightened up. And then I gotta get the carriage bolts so that we can bolt it to the cabinet. And then this will be ready to plug in once we're ready to start wiring it. All right, let me get this uh, tightened up and find the carriage bolts. Okay, um, these are the carriage bolts that go through here. And then they use big washers on the back of this one and also lock nuts again. So I need to reach in there. And this is the fun part. I'm trying to get that in place. Get a mess going on here. Get them finger tight so that I can uh, just go around back and tighten them the rest of the way. Okay, I'm gonna go around back and tighten those, and then um, we're gonna do the marquee next. Okay, we're gonna slide the speaker board up there, and these are the two Phillips screws that hold it in place, and then um, I'm gonna have to go grab a bulb and one more screw, because we are short one of these Allen head screws that hold the marquee brackets on because now I remember 
there was only two of the three in the back of the dashboard. So we're missing one of these. I'm fairly confident I have these in the house. So I have to go grab a new light bulb and another one of these bolts. But this just goes right back up in here. I cleaned it up. Wiring, obviously, we gotta just kinda get that to go to the back of the cabinet. The plug. screws go into the bottom of that board beautiful I'll go grab a bulb and I will find one of these screws actually I think we're gonna need more than one because we also have this metal bracket here which is three so I need four of these screws so let me go see what I can come up with Okay, I grabbed the bulb and I found the screws. Now the screws are a star bit versus a Allen head, but that's okay. What I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna put the original Allen head ones up top, and then I'm gonna put all six of the uh, star bit ones on the bottom so that they all match. And they're in my coat pocket. Thought I took them out of my coat pocket. Okay, um, I'm going to take the three old ones and put them in this bracket and just kind of let that bracket dangle there so that it's just kind of there and the screws are in there. These are the original ones here. You probably can't see it on the camera, but they're Allen head. These are the ones I had. Identical length. The only difference is, is they're star bit. So like I said, I'll put all the star bit ones at the top and I'll put the original three in the back there because people aren't really going to be removing the back glass very often so it's okay in my opinion if it's a different fastener i mean it's really all you can do when you get a game that doesn't have all the fasteners i remember now there was two in the two in the dashboard and then i believe there was two in each of these it was missing one, so that's where the three missing ones came from. Okay, that's just sitting there. Um, let's go ahead and uh, lightly put the bottom bracket on for the marquee. And then I gotta go grab the marquee. I don't tighten them all the way at first because this could slide in and out a little bit. So you can get the marquee in there. Okay, I'm gonna go wipe that down and bring it up here. Okay, this is in extremely good shape, I think, for being original. And mine on my cabinet is also original, but this is uh, screen printed right to glass. And those always usually seem to hold up well. See how I just slid that to get that to go in? Freight for eight bucks you can get this uh bit set and it has the security bits in it too for a lot of these games that have that uh nipple in the center of your torx bit i just buy these sets because when i break them or lose them it's not a big deal i just go buy another set for eight bucks it's not in my opinion it's not really worth buying expensive ones Now, 
I'm going to tighten the bottom before I tighten the top because the bottom's going to drive the glass upwards. If you tighten the top, you could bind up and not be able to get the bottom to go all the way tight because the glass will be kind of in the wrong position. Grabbing my drill here, make it a little quicker. And I try to push back on it. These don't have to be super tight. Okay. Now that we have that on, it's starting to look like a pull position again. I think it's looking real good. Um, I think I'm gonna, thinking about putting the mechanisms in the coin door. I think I'm gonna do that real quick. And then after that, we are going to make the uh, cardboard bezel for around the monitor. And then that'll be the end of part eight. And then part nine, we will probably be working on the power brick and, um, Maybe cleaning up the wiring harness and stuff. Uh, it was a little dirty, so I think I'm going to wash it with some uh, simple green and clean it up real good. And then we can just hang it to dry. So let me grab some uh, of the uh, internal parts for the uh, control or coin door. Okay, all the mechanisms and everything, I just wiped them down. They're all in good shape. I don't want to wire wheel them because if I wire wheel them, it's going to take the gold coating off of it. And I don't want to do that because they are in pretty nice shape. So we're gonna leave them as is. Um, so now we need to start putting this together. Um, I have the bulbs here for it, which I'll probably have to put new bulbs. Actually, these look like new bulbs. I might have to replace one of them. Yep, one's got a 555 and one's got a 194. 194 bulb is a 12 volt bulb. And I don't think a 555 is a 12 volt, but I'm not positive, I'd have to look. Um, I did find the other spring. So I have a set of springs here for the coin return buttons. And then, like I showed you before, I have the new coin return buttons. We are leaving this. That's the free play button. I did order a Dallas Ram for the circuit board. So it'll keep high score. Um, hopefully that'll come soon. Uh, I remember how to put these together. Sometimes I forget. This goes this way, just like that. Okay, these are a bit of a pain to put together. You gotta kinda do 10 different things at one time. I guess I could take it apart, but. Let's grab one of our things for our coin button here. This slides in just like this. Brand new. Looks good. It's upside down. That's better. Gotta grab our spring. Spring goes on that nub. Then we have to hold this up there. And try to put it all together in one shot.
I got the wrong size Phillips bit, a smaller one. But you get the idea. Um, so basically there's a screw here, here, and then those two down there. So you have to hold this chute with the button and the spring all at the same time and then sandwich it together and screw it together. And then that'll hold that all together. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this off camera to save some time. I'm gonna get both of these mechanisms put back in and then I will show you uh, what it looks like. Let me show you really quick how these go together. Okay, so this plate goes on the door first like that. You gotta make sure that your white part is upwards because this white coin re return button pushes on this mechanism right here and slides this mechanism up and down. So it goes like this, okay? And then you have these other brackets here that go on top. We have this one that goes here. Which way does this go here? They, somebody put a screw through this. It should have a um, a little nipple so you can take it out. So this goes like this, behind that, so that this is behind that because that red button, this red coin return button, this little nipple here goes through the metal like this and it pushes on this white part, which pushes on that, which makes your coin return. Um, so once you have this bracket here, this is the other side of the bracket. It slides into a little slot here. It's kind of hard to do. And then it goes like that. And then your screws go through both sets of brackets. And then this little nipple here is where your light bulb slides in and your light bulb slides forward and it goes up to that hole right there. Okay, those are together. Now these bulbs right here, this little track in the bracket just slides right over this metal like this. And the bulb protrudes into the metal bracket a little bit, which means it goes into the back of the button just a little bit. Okay, those are in. Other than it being dusty, looks real nice. Got these brand new reject buttons here. Um, so, all right, let me move this stuff, clean up, and I'm going to set up a board and a couple saw horses, and we're going to make one of these cardboard bezels. Okay, I made my little quick uh, garbage can saw horses here. Now we're going to grab that uh, cardboard bezel and start uh, tracing out patterns for it. Okay, the first thing I need to do is see if I can separate this very carefully. You have an overlapping flap here, and you have one up here, and I think that's it. Usually, like on a centipede, you'll have a there, and over here you'll have a seam. You'll have them opposite each other. These are right across from each other. This thing is filthy. It's been wet. Okay, so now that we have these two out, we need to lay it flat and get it traced onto another piece of this board. Now the board I'm using is right here. Let me grab that. Put this on the floor for a second. So this is it right here. This is matting used for picture frames. Normally there'll be like a white core um, so that when you uh, cut it on an angle around the picture, it has like a little nice white border. This has a black core. This came from Hobby Lobby. I bought three of them. They're not the cheapest. They're uh, $12 a sheet. Um, basically, you're gonna get one bezel per sheet. So we can lay this on here. We need to flatten it out. So basically we'll get this piece out of it and then this piece that goes up here. Now, yeah, you can probably get a couple of these out of one, but is that really gonna benefit you because still gonna have to waste a bunch of it. So what I wanna do is get this laid out. I mean, this sheet is just about the perfect length for it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace along the top here, make a mark right here, and then make a mark down here.
I'm not going to draw the real long area. I'll do it with my straight edge. Just in case there's any sort of a wave in the cardboard. This spot I can do. And then these curves I'm going to have to trace. And I'm going to make a mark here on an angle where that bend is supposed to be. There's two bends. Then we have a bend right here. And we have a bend right here. Okay, and those come right into these corners. So those bends come right into these corners here and here. Okay. I got this all dusty. Hopefully that'll wipe off. Let me get a paper towel. Worst case scenario, if it doesn't wipe off, I can always spray paint it. But I think we're going to be all right. Okay. So now... I need to make a little mark in here so that I know that's where my bends are at. Okay, so now we need to draw our straight lines. Connect those dots. Actually, we can just go ahead and cut it with the straight edge. The curves we're going to have to freehand. This is the knife I want to use. This one's got a dull blade. I got another one in my pocket. And that's what it cuts like. I just do a couple scores just to make it a little bit easier. This one here I'm on the bottom. I mean, if you have one to copy, piece of cake, usually. <laughs> Probably shouldn't say that until I'm done. Let me move this way so we can get in here. I like to stay on this side of the straight edge. I'll save that old cardboard template. I have one for uh, centipede as well, because uh, you can't do anything with that. So it's good to save for a future template. You need to make more. Probably should have got a sawhorse. So 
there is our first piece. Now, we have to see how they scored it. They did it on the back side. That one's on the back side, this one's on the outside. Okay, so our very outside pieces get scored on the outside. Two of them. So we need to score this one on the outside. Near to there. Now we don't want to push real hard, we just want to give it a score. Okay, and then we go from there to here with a score. Repeat that on this side. Okay. Now we have to turn it over. And we're going to go from that point to this point on the back side. try to bend this on the edges. Hopefully I scored it enough. I want to score it too much and then actually cut through it and waste a $12 piece. So you're probably better off using a little bit of a dollar knife blade. Okay, now we have this inside one here. Sorry about that, I had to take a phone call real quick. All right, so now I've got these outers bent, I need to bend these inners. To me looks really really good so now we just need to make the top part oh you know what i gotta bend this this lower one let's see where the slit is on the lower one it is also on the outside i gotta make another one of these tonight but i'm only making one on camera it's kind of pointless to make two so i need to cut this last slit right here on the outside we've got to go from uh the inside of that notch to the inside of the notch and we're not going to put this in the cabinet until it's uh the monitor's back in there because you might have to adjust it and it gets stapled in there Okay, so let's get that other little top part made. Then we can double side tape them back together and it should be good. So I'm gonna set this off to the side over here where I'm not gonna step on it. And then I'm gonna grab the rest of this sheet. We're gonna trace this out and make the rest of it. You know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this straight edge of the, the board so I don't have to cut that part. mark right here because we have to bend it there, bend it there.
like I said, anybody can do this. A little bit of patience, straight edge, marker. Don't even need a tape measure. I brought a tape measure over here thinking I was going to need it. But Okay, so I'm going to mark in here so that when I cut this, I know that that's where my bend is. Okay. This is just going to be all cut freehand here. This looks like Mickey Mouse. All right, throw that off to the side. Now we got to make a score right here. That score goes on the back side. This score, this one goes on the outside. It's an outside score. And then we need to go on the back side, just transferring my mark over. one folds forward. And this one folds back. Okay. I am pretty happy with that. grab this double-sided tape here. I have a thinner version of double-sided tape. I have two different styles. I have the 3M double-sided tape, which is pretty thick. It's almost an eighth inch thick. This stuff is literally as thin as notebook paper and it's double-sided tape. You can buy this on Amazon. Um, I didn't order it, so I don't know what it is exactly. But So what we need to do is take a piece of this tape and go right, almost right into that crease. And we're going to set it on there. And we're going to trim it. We could probably leave that section long. That should not matter. Piece on this side. So basically, this just runs right into that. And I want to double check and make sure. I had this one bent pretty far. One second, guys, sorry. 
looking at it to make sure. See how thin this stuff is. That's it. Let's see if it uh, somewhat fits in the cabinet. I would imagine it should, but. So this should just go right in here. So I have it upside down. That metal bracket's in the way. That metal bracket's in the way, I gotta move that. But I'm just gonna leave it right there for now. Fits, looks like it's gonna be perfect. So that's pretty much how you make a new cardboard bezel, just by using the other one as a template. All right, um, I think I'm done with this video. It's coming together pretty good. Um, just wanna let you guys know, I've almost hit 4,500 subscribers, which is awesome. I really appreciate everybody who's subscribing. Um, I hope everybody keeps subscribing. I'd really like to get to that 10,000 mark. It's kind of a goal I've always had. Um, I'm going to do a, a nice giveaway at 10,000 subscribers. So if anybody's watching, hasn't subscribed, please subscribe, like, share, hit the thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. Um, I'm going to do a pretty nice giveaway, I think, at 10,000 subscribers. Uh, I'll do a video on what it's going to be um, pretty soon here. I know I'm only almost halfway but that's okay, maybe it'll get people to uh, want to subscribe. Um, and it doesn't matter if you were the first subscriber or the 10,000 subscriber. Um, it's not gonna matter because I'm gonna use an app on my phone and it's gonna randomly just pick somebody out of the 10,000 that have subscribed to the channel. So it doesn't matter if you're the first one, the last one, middle one, it doesn't matter. So keep that in mind uh, for whoever's watching. I'd really appreciate if you guys wouldn't mind subscribing and hitting the thumbs up. That really helps get the video out to more people to see. And um, this is going to end part eight of the pole position. Uh, part nine, I'll get to maybe tomorrow night. We'll work on it again. Um, and then uh, we'll just keep going at it and get it, get it finished up. I need to take a look at the monitor, see what uh, cap kit I need to get for that. Other than that, that's going to end this video. So if you guys are liking what you're seeing, please like, subscribe, share, uh, pass it on to anybody you know. I have a Facebook page under Troy's Restoration. Um, I did change the channel name a little bit to Troy's Arcade Restoration because I felt that it might get out to more people when it has the word arcade in the title because Troy's Restoration is kind of generic and it wasn't, I don't think it was really showing people what exactly it was, you know. And then I still have my uh, other channel, uh, Troy's Restoration for the Cars, and I might tweak that a little bit too so that that makes it more car related so people can search it and it will come up a little bit easier. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys tomorrow.